With the country aging at a rate never seen before, the issues that come before this committee are timely, urgent, and ever-changing. Just two years ago this month, we held a hearing to examine how the onslaught of baby boomer retirees would affect our then robust economy. But what a difference two years can make. Today, we will turn that issue on its head as we examine how the now flailing economy is affecting baby boomers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. This could not be more timely. And thank you, all of you, for coming to testify before our committee. I've spent the last few weeks traveling around New York State, and when I've met with my seniors, their concerns are overwhelming. They're very worried about being able to afford their retirement. They are very worried about their savings, should they have any, that they've declined so rapidly that they feel enormous economic insecurity and financial insecurity. I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the issues that you, you've brought up on the 401ks. I understand the issue that you've raised about the target date and the need for regulation, so I'd like to hear what kind of regulation you think would be most effective. All of the things that you've asked about have really one common thread, and that is that our seniors, and frankly the, the American public, are not really well educated about their financial lives. And so when they get desperate, they make the wrong choices, um, leaving a, 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 an annuity or a, an income stream for a lump sum is um, appealing because they have some control over it, but they don't know what to do with it. So when we talk about legislation, I think we need to look at the inherent issue is most people are not educated to their own financial life. They do not know how to handle a lump sum. We, uh, we've made proposals to even make changes to Social Security, which is a serious issue of letting people handle their own situation. So we're just creating more and more opportunity for them to make bigger mistakes. We need to tighten up all of those things with legislation so that um, they cannot make these mistakes, and we need to educate them starting at a much earlier age than when they start retirement years. Many folks believe you should start educating children in the earliest years so that they understand uh, what financial health is at a very young age. Absolutely. I think we need to explore also um, partial retirement benefits so that people can work um, on a part-time basis or even full-time and still have access to some of their, um, their benefits. Uh, boomers, as I pointed out before, want to stay vital and active in the workforce. And the fact is, if we all quit, we wouldn't have enough people to replace us anyway. So we need to take a very positive view on working. We need to take a look at those arbitrary restrictions on, um, on uh, mandatory retirement. I mean, 65 was an arbitrary number to begin with. So we need to take a good long look at this, coupled with giving uh, employers um, uh, some benefits for supporting that health care will also help prop up a lot of the problems that we're having. Uh, Ms. Katz, I was going to ask whether in your financial planning you take a different approach with, you know, the baby boom generation, I guess, spans from those of us at the beginning of it in 46 to mid-60s, I guess, right? Are there different challenges in trying to prepare for retirement, obviously, depending on the age of the uh, people within that time frame? Well, there are simply because their resources are, are being strained from so many different levels. So one of the things we do is to encourage people to work longer. But there are not... Um, uh, flex, there's not a lot of flexibility in, in making those plans, and I think that's where legislation can help. Um, most boomers that I see are making a life transition. They are willing to accept working in a um, less lucrative um, <coughs> business to be able to have more personal satisfaction. That's the nature of boomers moving into the next phase of their life. That's why we don't, we don't relate to the word retirement. So as a result, we're going to see people um, working in a lot of other areas that they haven't been working in before for less money 
changing their lifestyle, downsizing, which is why we call it decumulation. It's not distribution. It is decumulating in a whole lifestyle. So we're talking more about lifestyle choices and, and fitting those into needs and circumstances with boomers than we ever did with the past generation. And as you point out, Ms. Katz, there is a real need for older people that employers need their experience and their wisdom and their willingness to work in a more flexible part-time arrangement to run their business. All the predictions about the future indicate that this is going to be true, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we don't have enough people in the workforce under retirement age to replace us. So I think that's going to be a very big issue, having legislation that dealing with older workers' rights and, and, and opportunities um, will be very vital in the future. We can't go away. And secondly, we don't want to go away. We want to stay active. And, yes. and that's, that's part of why we need to encourage um, a whole shift in what we have been looking for in the past. There's a big mental satisfaction in keeping people in the workforce beyond 65 to them, isn't there? Well, you know, as planners, we, we had started out saying, you can't retire you're going to have to work longer. And boomers would say back to us, we don't want to retire. We want to stay in this. We want to contr contribute. We have knowledge base that can't be replaced. So use us, but give us that opportunity to be used. So w what they're doing is putting a positive spin on something they have to do anyway and that's work longer because we need the resources. But now we're, we're working longer because we really want to stay in the economic community. We want to participate. The big problem is we give people the opportunity to retire, but we don't give them the tools to make the decision intelligently. I'm surprised that in the stimulus package we didn't include some kind of financial planning um, support for people because it's really what we're talking about here at every age they do not have the tools to make good decisions about their retirement so their forced working is is a result of not planning very well earlier as well as a lot of, of economic downturn that we've suffered in the last couple of years so legislatively I would like to see us provide more um, financial literacy programs, more education, more tools to, to retirees, more encouragement to seek intelligent, non-biased fee advice to be able to make those decisions. More people make, um, spend more time on, on what kind of refrigerator to buy than what they're going to do with their retirement. Hearings like this where the senators learn an awful lot by listening to the panelists are it don't occur every day, but it's occurred today. Uh, you brought a lot of information and wisdom to the table, and uh, I think a lot of it's going to be translated in action in, in, the, in the months to come. So we thank you so much for being here, and we thank you all for being here, and, and uh, we're adjourned.